All right, what we're going to do today is we're going to add on to this project that we've been working on. And just to show you, and mine's not complete, but it's more complete than it is incomplete, I guess. So if I come through here and I put in 72 and 125, let's say, it's going to come in. You've seen this before, and it's it's got the input at height, the input at weight, the calculated BMI, and the status. Well, what we're going to add today are the individual stats. So you can see that we're going to create another page, all right, and be able to go back to our original page. Plus, we will have, and I don't know why it's not holding it, but the group stats, and we can go back. So we're going to do that today, all right? I'm going to think about this tonight. There's, there's probably at least a pretty good chance that we won't have a test this week. Instead, what I'm thinking of doing is giving you two or three of these to try yourselves. We might do one more tomorrow. All right. But one thing that I have done, and I'm not saying, oh, I've done this. Well, is it fantastic? But just so you know, is I went back to the original, to, to the program that you guys were all working on, this BMI program, totally cleaned it up. I have no more warnings. I didn't have any errors, but I have no more warnings. And I wanted to show you what I did to get rid of the warnings. All right. One thing I found out was if I have no actual warnings other than typos, they don't even show. All right, so now my hope is that everybody had a chance to key this in on your own or whatever. And I realize we didn't have, if, if you don't know, Friday four, four out of ten of you showed. And um, I told the four that were here, you know, let's wait until one o'clock and see if anyone else shows. And if they don't, you can leave. So one o'clock came, no one else came, so the three of them left. Luke and I were here, and um, about 1.15, Shannon came by and said, we're closing, we're canceling class for the rest of the afternoon. So I asked Charles, I said, well, we only met for an hour. He said, I don't care. He said, if it was a regular scheduled class period, he said, those people who weren't there marked the map set. All right, so just so you know that. It's not that, you know, I, I, would, I said, can't we just set it to cancel? And he said, no. All right, he makes the calls on stuff like that. But again, my hope is that you have had time to, to, to go and at least create this first screen, the main screen that we have. In other words, this one right here. Again, you may have, um, you may have a different, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, image in there than I have, which is fine. All right. And as I'm going through my own copy, I'm seeing things. I should change. So I want to tell you about those two as we go on. All right. A couple of other things that I've done. Not that it's a big thing, but I can show you this by the end of class today if I remember. If I click this middle button down here, it, it basically is going to. I don't want to do that. I want it to close everything. Come on. And what should happen sooner or later is it is it should show me. It's not what I want. Come on. It should show me all of the apps that I have available in here. I changed the startup icon, you know, so right now it doesn't show as the uh, as the little Android figure. <clears throat> I was going to use the one I had there, but that was hard to read. So, Let's see if it's coming up now or not. I think it's not with the arrow. The arrow, okay, but it's in here. Thank you. It's in here someplace. Um, where is it? There, BMI, it's kind of hard to see with the circular one in there. It came out a lot better with the one that was uh, square, but we'll talk about that later on today, too. Okay? All right. Now, a, a few things as we get started. Don't worry about keying in these imports, but I do want to mention a couple things. I think I've said this before, but I do want to say it again anyway. I'm trying to be complete here. So the first thing is what you'll notice if you take a look up on the screen here, I've got import Android X dot app compact dot app dot app compact activity. That gets put in for you or should automatically, and that's allowing for back backwards compatibility. 
and the the recommendation is that you never remove that all right I know that in the past when I've worked with app compat that screwed up things on on these um, on these apps more than anything else has all right now when we look at the rest of the stuff again you may or may not have everything I should I've shown here and it's okay if you don't but the first one where it says import android.content.intent and intent I N T E N T is how you can add extra screens or what are called new activities to your project we're going to do that today all right virtually everything that you use in Android is considered to be a view in one way or another so you notice the import of Android dot view dot view all right I think the button and the edit text and the toes should be familiar to you by now and we've looked at the decimal format before all right so when you look up here again what I've been trying to do here for lack of better words what I've been trying to do is combine some of the stuff you know from the the quote regular Java unquote to what we're working on now all right so again you can see that I've got I, I put in quite a few constants here these are all I'm sure make sense to you minimum height and weight maximum height and weight this what I wanted to do was if if you were out of range I just wanted to give either a out of range height method or an out of range weight method again I don't think there's probably not too much about that you don't understand and this minimum optimal optimal rather minimum over and minimum obese just to make it a little easier when I'm doing my checks all right okay so what do we have here you've got two edit texts you can see what those are they're for the height and the weight there's four buttons all right and there is a button to calculate there is a button to clear there is a button for the individual statistics and a button for the group statistics this is one of the first things I wanted to show you here and that is in fact, let me just go run it again <clears throat> there are certain things that as a developer you should start thinking of if you look up on the screen here such as all right being able to print out either these individual statistics right here as you see or these group statistics what I may decide I want to do in the future if you look up on the screen here is to take these two buttons and gray them out or disable them until I've actually calculated at least one BMI all right again the reason I'm telling you this is when you get in and you start building your own app I want it to be smart all right and if, if you're going to do something where you're making a calculation or something like that all right you want to you, you want to make sure that if you've got a calculate button that there's something in there or like I've got here notice if I click calculate and there's nothing in here I brought a toast up that says height input it out of range etc all right and here then are the non widget variables just so you know you could care you might not care but when we worked in C sharp and uh, we were working we were, we were making Windows Forms apps typically if you put a button on there you refer to it as a button control Java refers to all their controls as widgets Again, you might not care but I'm just telling it to you all right so these again were, were all the things here are our non widget variables I wanted the total number of underweight people the total number of optimal weight people the total number of overweight people the total number of obese people these right here again if you would please look up on the screen this int height and int weight you all are smart enough to realize that those are going to be the numerical representation of these two variables all right BMI is what we're trying to figure out in here we've got a 
BMI string, which I'll get to in a little bit, and our BMI status, which is going to be underweight, overweight, etc. All right. Now, the, the first thing, I'm going to do this a little bit out of order, but if you look down, again, if you, if you have this code, if you go down right near the bottom, at least on mine, on the very bottom, I've got a routine called show group stats. You won't need that anymore. You can see that I have commented it out. I just commented it out. So, you know, uh, in, in fact, if you removed it already, fine. Basically, we're going to take that and we're going to create that on another screen. All right. But just, just so you know that. All right. So starting to look at the code then. First thing to notice, please look up on the screen. It's, again, is it important? It's up to you. When I had showed you this in the past, we did this. Oops. Where we came in here and we casted it. You don't have to do that anymore. You can do it. But notice once I did it, it came in and it gave me a warning. That's the warning is right here. You don't have to cast anymore when you use find view by ID. So you can change all those and remove the casting that you put in at the beginning. You say, well, I want to leave it there. You can leave it there. But then you're going to get six warnings if you leave them there. All right. Again, if you get rid of them, boom, the warnings will go away. All right. <clears throat> Next, my hope is that as we start going through this and start looking at it, all right, again, I've made some changes in here. All right. When when I um, left education before I got back into education, I worked for a year as an engineer, a software engineer for an aerospace company. And in one of my first jobs, I was asked to set up this order entry system for the company I was working at. And the reason I'm telling you this is I wasn't I, I knew exactly what I wanted to do but I didn't know how to start it. Some of you, I think, have you know, probably been hit by the same thing. So I asked a developer named Don, who was a lot more experienced than I was, and probably a better programmer than I was. I told him what I wanted to do, and he said, oh, you probably want to use like a finite state machine. The reason I'm telling you that is that's kind of what I did right here. So if you look, this, this, may, this may be different than what you guys have. I don't know. But if you look up here, this is what I have for the calculate button. I've got a Boolean variable that's called keep going. I mean, you can call it anything you want. A natural thing to call it would be the word continue. You can't use the word continue because it's a keyword. All right. But here, what I'm doing is notice I'm not even setting this. In fact, if I wanted to, I could put the word Boolean down here and totally get rid of that. There's a lot of different ways that you can do this. If I go back in here and I just assume it's true, all right, if I do that, it immediately jumps back and it gives me a warning. And it says, okay, since it's true and you're checking it next, you know, basically you're always going to end up going into it. You know, it's like what they're saying is it's not mandatory that you put that there. All right. I was always taught when I was in your seats, all right, I was always taught that you that when in doubt, take everything there is and initialize it. It's just safe. But if your goal is to remove not just the errors, but the warnings, then don't initialize right here. Or like I said, I think this would work. I don't know, you know, have any reason to doubt that it wouldn't. We can do it like that too. All right, so either one of those ways will work. But if you notice, if you look up on the screen, there are only two pieces of information that we're inputting into this program. That is the person's height and the person's weight. So I assume you want to keep going, so you want to put in the, the height. And notice that validate height 
is going to return a Boolean variable. So it'll have to return true if I put in a valid height. In other words, a height between 12 and 96. And it'll return false if I put in a height that's less than 12 or greater than 96. All right? <clears throat> if it returns true, then I'm going to go in and validate the weight. If it doesn't, I'm going to end up, well, that's if keep going, that's if keep going. So if it does not return true, I'm done with this routine. Does that make sense to everyone? Take a look at it, please. If it doesn't, ask. So I'm coming in here. This is the this is the on-click listener that's going to run. That's going to run when I click the calculate button. So I've got this variable that I'm creating here called keep going. And I'm going to set it equal to the return value from validate height. So after line 78 runs and validate height returns, keep going will either be true or keep going will be false. If keep going is true, then I'll tell it to validate the weight. If keep going is false, I'll skip the rest of this routine. So let's assume I put a valid height in. All right. So I put in a valid height so that, in other words, keep going now holds true. So since it holds true, remember this is a shortcut for if keep going equal equal true. So now I'm going to validate the weight. And really, the validate height and the validate weight that you're going to see in a minute, they're very similar to one another. All right. One's height and one's weight. The numbers are different but the way they work are virtually identical to one another. That said, it probably would have been possible to make one routine called validate and validate both the height and the weight with that routine. That's not considered good programming practice. All right. Ideally, every method should have a defined job and just one job. So this one, its job is to validate the height. This one, its job is to validate the weight, etc. So we're assuming we put in a valid value for the height. So keep going is going, you know, is going to hold true. So then we well, let's also assume that we put in a valid value for the weight. So that gets us down to here. So notice what's what's here now. BMI equal calculate BMI. BMI status equal calculate BMI status. And then we've got our show individual stats. So in other words, if I put in a valid height, it, it you know if validate height returns true, it calls validate weight. If validate weight returns true, it calls calculate BMI, it calls calculate BMI status, then it calls show individual stats to print out those individual stats. Does all that make sense? All right, it may sound really simplistic, but you have to also account for error conditions. If you are writing an app and somebody, you know, for example, you ask them to put in their age and <clears throat> they put they, they leave it blank or they put in something non-numeric. First of all, that should never happen with a blank. I'm sorry, with a non-numeric if you set your keyboard up correctly. But let's say you forgot to set the keyboard up. All right. So now somebody can put hello in there for their age and the program blows up. Well, even if it's a free program, people are going to think it's a, it's a piece of junk. All right? So you have to sit there and you have to go through, try to think of error conditions. When you are up here in about three months, four months, whenever, three and a half, I guess, and you are presenting during that last class period, I want you to show it, whatever your, whatever your app is, show how it handles bad data. All right. I want the presentation that you give to be professional. All right. So let's just take a look and let's follow these routines. So here's validate height. All right. So what are we doing here? Notice I've got this big try catch statement right there. So the whole thing is inside of a try catch. Everything that's in there is in a try catch. Remember, in the try, that holds what you're trying to do. So this says right here, this says grab whatever I put into that text box, grab the text, convert it to a string, 
and then convert that into an integer and take the result and have it hold or put it into height. That's either going to work, in which case I'm going to go down here and check it to make sure it's within range, or it's not going to work, and it's going to throw a number format exception. If it throws a number format exception, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to present a toast. And that toast is going to give an out-of-range method for the height. Oh, and I wanted to show you this. It's not a big thing, but please look on the screen. All right, don't ask me why I didn't show you before, because I forgot. Notice those are two different lines of code. I think everybody would agree with that. If you don't want to do it like that, you can put dot, oops, not like that. On the end here, you can put, come on, dot show. And if you put that in, you don't need this line. All right, something's wrong, but it's you can do it. All right, I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I did try it to begin with, and it came out as an error. I don't remember. All right. So you come through here, you grab this value for the height. If you are able to correctly parse it, it means it holds an integer. All right, if it holds an integer, then we come through. Notice this is not in a while loop. It's in an if statement. And it says, if the height we entered was less than 12 or the height we entered was greater than uh, 96, I just reset the height variable to zero, which it was set to to begin with up here. Height is zero right there. So I just reset it to make sure that it's got that value in it. All right. And then, then you should be able to figure out what this stuff is doing. This is taking what's in that text box and it's blanking it out. All right. Then this is putting the cursor there. Now, this is something new. So if you look, I'm throwing my own exception. See that? I'm not letting the system do it. I'm doing it. All right, so I say throw number format exception. So in other words, if the if statement is true, meaning it's out of range, I'm going to set up the toast and show the toast and return false. If I get all the way through all of this code without an error, I return true. So either line 163, the highlighted line here, must be hit, or line 172 there must be hit. But either way, it's either true or false that I end up returning to right here. All right. So let's assume I return true. Now I go down and I validate the weight. Again, almost the same routine. Again, returning a Boolean. Again, everything is in a big try catch. Again, just like before, we grab what was in the weight text box or edit text, all right, and we grab it, we convert it to a, a string and attempt to parse it. This is going to break if I were to put in a decimal point. Did you all hear me? That's why when I set up the input type, I set it up as number, not as number decimal. If I wanted to allow somebody to put in part of a pound or part of an inch, I could have done that. I chose not to. All right. So again, we come in here in the same kind of way. We make sure that should say that the weight is within range. And that was between one and just that arbitrary value I came up with, 777. So if you put in a value that's less than one, or you put in a value that's greater than 777, again, we take weight, reset it to zero, we take whatever is there and set that to blank. All right. We request the focus and we throw again a number format exception. Handle exactly like it was before. The only thing I do want to mention to you about this, again, sorry I keep saying it, but please look up on the screen here. It's kind of important. All right. There are a lot of people who think you're, you're much better when you do this having a label and not having a hint like this. 
Now think about it. If I had a label up here that said input height or something, and one here that said input weight, and I didn't have these, then what I could do is instead of having a hint, I could set that to zero. I could manually put a zero in there. That way, if there was ever bad data, I could manually make sure there was always a number in there. Does everybody get that? Because that's pretty important. All right? And it's up to me as far as how I want to be able to handle that. All right? When I say it's up to me, in this case, because I'm making the app. If you're making an app for somebody, of course, you find out what they want. All right. So... As far as what's left here, again, let's quickly look at the Calculate BMI, which is one line long, I believe. Two lines. Believe it or not, you're, and you're going to see this when we talk in a couple minutes about using intents. This was kind of tough when I, when I wanted to to take something and format it to two decimal places and then pass it along to another routine? Are you all with me? I wanted to grab the BMI. I wanted to format it to two decimal places. Then I wanted to take that formatted BMI and pass that on to my other screen. It didn't like it no matter what I tried to do. It just didn't like it. So what I did was I made a copy of it and just made it a string, and that's what I end up passing to the other screen. All right? Not this. I, this is my BMI right here. That's the BMI calculation. And just like you've seen in other languages, here we've got math.pow. All right? I could have, instead of having this math.pow right here, in the parentheses, I could have just said height times height. It would have done the same thing. All right? It would have worked just fine. All right. And then finally, for figuring out our status, okay, if it's less than 18.5, you're underweight. If it's between 18.5 and less than 25, you're optimal weight. If it's greater than 25 but less than 30, you're overweight. And if it's greater than or equal to 30, you're obese. Notice that in each case here, if you look, I'm also incrementing the appropriate counter. So plus, plus total underweights plus plus total optimal weights, plus plus total overweights, plus plus total obese. All right? So let's start talking about the new stuff. All right? As we, as we bridge our way into this, again, I want to ask, is there anything that we've done so far, anything I've mentioned today that doesn't make sense? This is your chance to ask. Because I have to assume then, whether it's at the end of this week or whether it's next week, whenever, when you take your test, that you'll be able to write something similar to this. All right? Now, this has changed a lot. This is the individual stats routine. Okay? And I want to go over it. I guess probably what I, I hate doing this because I hate wasting all the paper, but probably during the break, I will run you off a copy of this one and the next one. They're short. They'll all be on one page. Maybe I can just do them together. But um, what we're doing here, all right, or what we're going to do is we're going to use, again, what's called an intent. Please look up on the screen here because there's two things you have to do for an intent. The first thing. If I go back here and I go to my main activity, okay, there's my main activity, okay? If I want to go in and create a new activity, and you'll notice I have three of them here, okay? You find where the main activity was, you go up to right here, which is one level higher, you right mouse click, you choose new, activity and in our case it will be a empty activity that's how you go in and create a new screen in an Android program you go up and I'll do it again but look on the screen here make sure you're here 
Make sure you're at the package level for where your main activity is. Go up to that package then. Single click on that package. Right mouse click on the package. Choose new. Go all the way down to activity, which is about two thirds of the way down, and then go up to empty activity. How do you know what package? Right now we only have one package. These two are for testing. We're not going to even hit on that to like unit six. This stuff. It's the last one. It should be the only one. If you look in here, to answer your question, see this? All right, when you look here, that doesn't have a main activity. That doesn't have a main activity. There's only one with a main activity, so it's that package. All right, so again, we right mouse click, we choose new, we go down to activity, and then we go up, I guess you'd say, to empty activity, right like that. Okay. Now, if we do this and I and I click, I'm going to get this. Does that look familiar? It's kind of what we did at the beginning. Notice what it calls your new activity by default. Main two activity. Don't do that. All right. Because if you if you've got seven screens and they're basically called activity main one, activity main two, through activity main seven, how are you going to know what's what? All right, so give it a name that makes sense. All right, and when you change it up here, it'll automatically change it in here. You'll notice some stuff that you, you know, there's some stuff in here you're not asked anymore. It, it knows your default package name. This, does anybody know where I've got the cursor now where it says, okay, it shows you there. This launcher activity. There should only be one launcher activity in a program. That means when you run the program, what screen does it start on or what activity? We don't want it to start on our new activity. We want to get to our new activity. All right? And, okay, that's fine. Yeah, whatever. Okay? But what I'm going to do just to show you how you can do this is, I mean, I, 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 maybe I won't, but I could go in here and just click finish now, and it's going to make a brand new activity for me. All right, in fact, I'll do it. Okay, so when I do it, notice down here, now there's main two activity. And it actually creates two files. It creates main two activity.java, which is almost empty. And if I go under my res and I go under my layout, I now have an activity main two.xml. All right. And it's important to realize I don't want these. So I'm just going to right mouse click here and I'm going to choose delete, say yes. All right, and it's saying, hey, you know, you, it's not safe to do that. You can tell it to delete it anyway. But make sure that you also delete the other one, the XML file. In other words, you want both of them to be gone. All right. So what I did for my second screen is I just made this. And again, I'm not getting any style points. It ain't pretty or anything else. But here was the second screen. You blow it up a little bit so you can take a look at it here. It's a little too big. All right. But that's it. I set up both screen two and screen three so they were the same. All right. I put individual BMI stats for the title. I put in here, I put a text view that I said can be up to, I think it was 10 lines long. All right. And then I put a button here so I can go back to my original screen. Okay? And I just do want to show you this. I want to bring the program up again and show you it's not that big of a thing. All right? But most, most things will tell you. So if I come in here, I'm just going to put in numbers. All right. So when I click there and I click here, now I'm on that screen. Everybody see that? Okay, and is that that big a thing? No, but I had to add code. I had to add a button in code if I want a button to go back. All right, most most of the time when you when you read these things, they'll say if you want to go back, just click the back button right here, which is fine. All right, and most people know to do that, but just in case they don't, I put I manually put a back button in there. Does that make sense? 
all right? And really that thing in there, it needed four pieces of information. It needed the height, it needed the weight, it needed the BMI, and it needed the BMI status, all right? It needed those four pieces of information, all right? And you maybe you noticed this, maybe you didn't. If you look on the screen, see that? When I use the button, it doesn't keep my data. But when I use the back button here, it does keep my data, which might be a reason you don't want to use that, because otherwise you've got to figure out a way to save it. All right? Okay. So when I built this, like I said, there's nothing big about it, nothing fantastic. But I wanted to show you a couple things. First of all, you may know this, you may not know this, but if you look up on the screen, if I go here and I grab where it says BMI calculator, right there, if I copy that to the clipboard and then come over here and I paste it right there, of course it's going to say BMI calculator. But when it copies it, it copies all the formatting over. So I'd set it equal to 30 SP, which means scalable pixels. That's typically the, you use SPs when you're working with text, all right? So it kept the color, it kept the size, it kept the fact that I bolded it. So I only had to go back in and change the title from BMI calculator to individual BMI stats, all right? And also, if you look at the next one, this is my group page. So you see the individual, there's the group. And when I blow up the size like, it, like the other one, they virtually, look the same all right and that was done on purpose no you didn't have to do that but yes it's the way that I did it all right so I want to show you now all right I want to show you now the code that I had to put into the main activity to get this to work all right So here was the individual stats. When you want to go and pass information from, when you want to pass information from one routine, or I'm sorry, one activity or screen to another one, all right, if you want to pass a lot of information, I wouldn't say this is a lot, but it's pretty much four different pieces of information, you use what's called a bundle. Again, this is, a, this is a, an Android word, not my word. So as you can see on line 106, I created a new bundle to hold this stuff. And then on lines 107, 108, 109, and 110, I'm now stuffing stuff into the bundle. What am I stuffing in? I'm telling it height, weight, BMI string, and BMI status. Those are the variables. These that you see here, that's the headings for the variables. You know, I could have called them A, B, C, and D or whatever, but it makes much more sense to use either the same name as the variable name or something darn close to it. All right? So after I've done this, I now have this bundle that contains my four pieces of information. Then what's next here, if you look up on the screen, and I put a couple comments, not a lot, but this is how you create what's called an intent. Notice, intent, and I called my, my individual intent, IND intent. I could call it anything I want to. And I say it's a new intent. You, got to, you use this a lot. This gets the current context. It's where we currently are. And this, if you look on the screen, I told you this. You may or may not have remembered it when we were talking about Java. But I said Java is a little bit different in that most languages that both compile and interpret, most of those languages interpret first, then they compile. Java does the opposite. Java compiles your program into a dot .class file. I'm telling you that because if you look on the screen, I'm telling it that I want it to go to the individual stats activity page, and the way I do that is I give it the class file. All right? So this is creating the intent telling it where I want it to go, this attaches the bundle to that so it's going along for the ride, and then you start the activity. Boom. That, that actually, that line that's in blue actually is what makes it go 
so to speak. All right. So it, it basically causes it to go to another page. If I am not passing any information from one page to another, if I'm not passing anything, I don't need this and I don't need this. So if I've got, if I'm not passing any information from one page to another, all I have to do is create the intent and start the activity with the intent name in it. That's it. All right. Now for the on-click listener for the other one, this is the one, oh, I should mention too, if you look, the data types better be the same. Height is an integer. Weight is an integer. This BMI string, it was a string. And BMI status was a string. What some people do, and there's a name for it, it's Hungarian notation or one of those things. I don't remember. What they do, for example, is they start every integer variable with a lowercase i, every double variable with a lowercase d, every string variable with a lowercase s, etc. Sometimes that can make it easier. If that helps you, then do it that way. You're like, no, then don't do it that way. All right? So again, I do the same kind of thing. Everything I'm doing here is an integer. So what I'm doing is I'm bundling this stuff together, packaging it together, whatever it is you want to call it. All right? These are all ints. All right? They're just my, they're my accumulators. Total number of underweights, total number of optimal weights, total number of overweights, total number of obese. They're all ints, so you can see what I'm doing here. I instantiate or create the new bundle. All right. I basically bundle up the stuff. I create another intent. I believe I could have called both of these, just called them intent if I wanted to. The same name. I don't think it would have hurt anything. All right. But I wouldn't have had to put intent the second time. But I made two of them. This was for my group stuff, group stats activity class. Same kind of thing. So now I believe at least we have gone over everything on this page. Again, I don't need this group stats anymore. So I'm removing that. All right. I mean, it's code bloat. I can leave it in there. Since I'm not using it, there's really no sense in putting it in there. The file save all. Now I'm going to go to the next page. This is my individual stats page. All right? It's going to look very similar to stuff we've done before. It's going to hold what? Remember what it looks like. There it is. If you've got a heading like this, you're almost never going to do anything with it. It's just a heading. All right? The reason I'm telling you that is if you look up on the screen, there's my text view and there's my button. I didn't set up another text view for the heading because I'm not doing anything with it. All right? So here's the, these things right here are going to hold those things I bundled. Did you hear what I said? They're going to hold what I bundled. Now, there's something new in there that you may or may not even realize. If you look up on the screen plates, notice the word integer. It doesn't say int. It's got the word integer. And what I'm actually doing right now there is a term for it, not my term. It's a Java term. When I want to be able to take a simple variable, again, hopefully you remember, a simple variable is a primitive variable. And Java has eight primitive variables. Byte, short, int, long, double, float, char, and boolean. If I want to be able to take one of those variables and treat them not like they're a simple variable, but like they're a class variable, then when I create them, I use this. I use the capital. Okay? It's called boxing a variable. Not boxing like hitting, but when you do it like this. When you do the reverse, it's called unboxing. So I'm boxing these variables right here. Then in my on create, what's new? Well, you know what this is. You've seen that before. All right? Or something very similar to that. Then notice, get the intent of the target activity. All right, here I just called it intent. So this is the stuff that I just bundled. I now want to make an intent 
and I'm going to unbundle it. All right. So when it says right here, extract, what I am attempting to do is unbundle what I bundled in the other activity. And you'll notice this is virtually the whole thing in here. All right, almost all of it. In fact, it is for, the, for right here. And notice it's all inside of an if, and it says if extra is not equal null. Sometimes when you attempt to send something from one routine to another, it fails. So if it fails, what it would do is extras would hold the value null. So when I try to send it from over here with what I just showed you with this stuff, if I tried to do this and it didn't work, then this bundle that's called extras would hold null. All right. So if as long as it doesn't hold null, then what do I do? Guess what? You may have heard this term before. You may not have. Look on the screen. This is called a key value pair. That's the key. That's the value. That's the key. That's the value. That's the key. That's the value. That's the key, and that's the value. So in here, I'm saying if there's a key called height, then go ahead and grab that height variable. In other words, we pulled it over from one screen or activity to the other. So we're now going to be able to use it. All right. And if we can't, if we can't use it, give it a value of zero. Typically, you want to put in some kind of a default value. So you'll notice that for my ints, I give them a default of zero. And for my strings, I give them a default of the empty string. That should never, I should never have to worry about it. But it's defensive programming. So again, I'm unbundling right here. I'm unbundling the height. I'm unbundling the weight. I'm unbundling the um, BMI. And I'm unbundling the status. Then this right here, that, that right there is just taking all those values that I just unbundled and it's putting them in here, in this white box. That's exactly what it's doing. All right. And then this, if you look up on the screen, I didn't know how to do this. I did, but I'd forgotten totally how to do it. So I went out to Stack Overflow and I said, how do you put a button in a routine so that you can go back to your main activity? All right. And I took most of their code almost verbatim out of here. But remember that when you use the button to go back, somehow I'm losing my values. So probably I should get rid of the buttons that I have here and here. I should just get rid of them. So when my, when my user has to use the back button, she or he will retain the values in those variables that they had. Otherwise, if you didn't see that, when I did it, I was losing the values in my counters, etc. You don't want to do that. All right, and then finally, this is the group stats, and it's very similar to the one we just saw. Except it's got all integers, total underweight, total optimal weight, total overweight, total obese. This string is where I put all that stuff in so that I can throw it out onto that text view. But what we're doing in here is virtually the same thing, creating the intent, checking to make sure it's not null, and then grabbing the four things. Notice it's get int. All right. The ones that were here, get string, get string, get int, and get int. These are four get ints. If you don't put the right type in there, it's not going to work. All right. Then here, these four lines, much the same way, those four lines are filling up what goes in right here. All right. And this is handling the back button. So again, as I mentioned to you, some things to think about. All right. Some things in here to go think about. When we go in here, first of all, when I bring this up, probably I should have set the disabled property to true for this and for this. I don't have any individual stats yet. I don't have any group stats. So I probably should have done that. 
all right if there's if it's already been cleared do I want to go and take the clear button and disable that you can enable and disable stuff any way you want as much as you want and I believe I could be wrong but let's see once so I'm gonna go back into my activity main file here and just click on any button it doesn't matter which one and I'm going to go down here yeah see it there's an enabled property all right so you can set it to false to disable something but again what I want you to start getting into your heads is okay now I pretty much got this done I pretty much got this to work start going in there and literally try to break it all right because you know that if you if 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 anybody can find a way to break it it'll be somebody who probably doesn't have a clue as to what they're doing all right it's 130 let's take a break and come back please at 145.